Hey y'all, welcome to the STD Projects STD Podcast. My name is Janelle Marie Pierce and I'm the founder and executive director of the STD Project. So we are back for another installment of answering some of your most frequently asked questions about STIs and STDs and living with an STI and STD. But before we begin, a little bit about myself. Um, I am the founder of the STD Project. I launched that in 2012 alongside STD Awareness Month. I'm also the spokesperson for PositiveSingles.com and the tri-chair of the Communications Action Group for the National Coalition for Sexual Health. So that's like a super big mouthful. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, you're watching the unedited version. So keep in mind that everything is 100% just as it was recorded. And that's kind of the fun part. We did that on purpose because like, despite all the accolades or all the, I don't know, titles and things like that, I'm just an everyday person trying to help people, trying to reach out and do my best in which um, I guess, you know, you beat the judge. So I digress. Uh, also, I sit on the board of the International Union Against Sexually Transmitted Infections. Or, my goodness, I don't sit on the board. See, here we go. Bloopers. I'm a member of the International Union Against Sexually Transmitted Infections, the American Sexually Transmitted Disease Association, the National Coalition of STD Directors, and the National Viral Hepatitis Roundtable. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot. You may have seen some of my work and some of the things that I've done, maybe my face somewhere, like the Washington Post, Cosmo, Kinkley, Planned Parenthood, Pornhub. I've written for all of them, done interviews, done a lot of outreach work in the last few years, had a podcast previously. So like if you look on iTunes, um, Stitcher, Podchaser, Android, or Android, oh my goodness, Android Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Goodness, this is why we have a blooper reel, right? Um, if you look up uh, on any of those apps, basically anywhere you want to listen to a podcast, you will see our old podcasts as well. So you can kind of get a feel for what we used to do as opposed to what we're doing now. Really similar, super short podcasts intentionally, um, mostly because my attention span is short and I get sick of hearing myself talk by myself. That's boring to me. Um, I really give props to people who can do long podcasts, especially by themselves or without somebody that they're interviewing. We do interview people too, though. So if you'd like to be an interviewee, a participant on the podcast, let us know. I digress. So without further ado, today's podcast is about... What's today's podcast about? Oh, you probably have an STD. Cheers. Cheers to that. So, yeah, you probably have an STD, or some of all of your friends have an STD, or your family. Basically, many people that you know have an STD. Nobody's talking about it. And we're going to talk about why, why that's the case, and why you're like, absolutely not, I don't have an STD, unless you actually are like listening to us because you're STI positive. But if you just happen to land on this on YouTube, and you're like, who is this chick and how dare she say that? Uh, the likelihood is actually higher than you not having an STD at all. So if you are sexually active, the likelihood of you having been exposed to and or still having an STI is still pretty high. So let's talk about numbers a little bit. Not everybody always wants to hear about the numbers and the, the statistics themselves, but here's why this is relevant. So there are 30 plus STIs according to the World Health Organization, not just me, 30 plus STIs, according to somebody else other than me. And not only that, when you get tested, so say if you have ever gotten tested, an STD panel, a full STD panel, a full STD panel only includes about four to six at max STIs. So you can only be tested regularly and out there available for like four to six STIs. Some of the private online tests that are available test for like 10 plus infections, but there are 30 plus infections that you can contract. Now, a lot of them are not nearly as common and are more rare, but there are a lot that are common that you can't be tested for. For instance, if you are a man, you cannot be tested for HPV, the human papillomavirus. So 
The virus, the high risk strains of human papillomavirus can cause cancer, cervical, penile, throat, etc. And you can't be tested to see if you even have that at all. You cannot be tested. There is no test for you. So if you are a male identifying person, um, a person with male genitalia from birth, I should say, I guess, is how that would that would work. Because if you are a male identifying person, but you still have um, a vagina, you can't actually get a, a test, a screen for HPV, but only if you have a cervix. So I digress. Anyways, that's one infection, right? So that's one infection that's super, super common. The majority of all people by the age of 50 will have contracted HPV at some point in their lives. Like now, a lot of people won't know this because your body oftentimes will take care of the virus. HPV is a virus, the human papillomavirus, and your body will clear it on its own. But for the folks that don't clear it, it can be either low risk or high risk. The low risk strains cause genital warts and the high risk strains can cause cancer, can cause cancer. Now, if you have a high risk strain, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to lead to cancer, but that is a possibility. And it's a, it's a, a slim possibility. It's, it's fairly unlikely even if you have a high risk strain. So it's not like the doom and gloom of the world. People are like, oh my gosh, I have this high risk strain, I'm going to die. And that's not necessarily the case at all. And I'm not a let's jump to conclusions kind of person. So anyways, so we're talking about HPV specifically. That's one infection. That's one infection that there's not a test that's readily available for. Even if you are a woman identifying person with a cervix and a vagina, if you regularly get a pap smear, they don't test for HPV. So a pap smear tests for abnormal changes on your cervix, abnormal cell changes. It doesn't specifically test for HPV. So if you don't have any abnormal cell changes, then you still may be carrying the virus, but it has not caused abnormal cell changes at that time. If you have abnormal cell changes, if you have an abnormal pap smear, then that means 99.9% .9 sure it's HPV. So if you've had an abnormal pap smear, chicks, that means you've had HPV. Most people are like, oh, all of my girlfriends have had an abnormal pap smear at one point or another. That just means we had to go in for a pap smear more regularly. I've had them too. So nope, that means you actually had an HPV infection at some point and they were monitoring it to see if your body took care of the virus and fought it on its own or if it would progress into additional cell changes and problems um, related to high risk strains. Now the low risk strains, genital warts, you can be a carrier, you can have the low risk strains of genital warts and not actually have genital warts, so not have visual warts that you can notice and things like that. You may have contracted that from a partner. So, okay, let's go backward. This is one infection that I'm talking about, one of 30. By the age of 50, 80% of all people will have this one infection at least some point in their lives. So when I tell you that you probably have an STD, you get an STD, and you get an STD. It's like I'm the Oprah of STDs. I mean, but truly, it's because it's likely. If you're sexually active, if you're not sexually active, then you're in a whole different camp, and then well, I'm not talking to you, basically. We're not having a conversation about this. I mean, it's good to know, but this doesn't pertain to you. If you are sexually active, then yes, at some point in your life, you will probably contract HPV among potentially other infections. And the other ones have different levels of commonality, whether they're higher or not, we can't go into all 30 of them, right? In the short podcast, because all of our podcasts are like 10 minutes long, unless we're interviewing someone and then sometimes they're longer than that. But anyways, the point is, is that it's highly likely that you and all the people you know have had an STI at some point in their lives. Most people just aren't talking about it. Most people don't tell you about their gynecological exam. Most people don't tell you when they get tested for STIs and STDs, if and ever they do. And then that's the other thing. It's like you can only get tested for so many infections and then you might not know that you have the others until it becomes an issue and or your body might clear it before it does become an issue. I mean, there are so many factors involved. This is just a part of our lack of education across the board. Most people just are entirely unaware that they are likely to have been exposed. They are likely to have been carriers whether or not they had symptoms at all. And that's the other component to this, right? So the most common symptom of all STIs is zero, no symptom whatsoever. 
So not a symptom on any level, but you can still have an infection and you can still transmit it to other people, which really sucks because you want to know and things and you want to have it cured and fixed and things. And, and the other the other side of that is like if you have an infection, say it's a bacterial infection, right? And you have no symptoms. You're totally unaware that you have this infection. However, it continues to progress. Your body doesn't take care of it and doesn't cure it because your body can't cure all infections. That's why herpes is forever. HIV is forever without treatment. And even so, we can reduce it, but it's not entirely gone. I mean, so I digress. It, go, it goes on and on and on. That's why there are many infections that you still carry with you. You can still transmit to other people. But there are some infections that are very commonly without symptoms at all, all together. And then if you don't get tested and they don't get treated, they can become bigger issues. You can A bacterial infection can turn into pelvic inflammatory disease, which can cause irreparable damage. So 15%, read, 15% of all infertility cases are a result of an untreated STI. So most people know someone who struggled with infertility at some point in time. 15% of those people, what is that, one in seven? One in six, seven, something like that. Anyways, I'll do the math in a moment and make sure. I used to be an accountant. You'd think I'd know this by heart, like on right offhand. Anyways, so everyone knows someone who has had some sort of experience with infertility. And then 15% of those people, it's a result of STDs. Now, they probably aren't going to tell you that. And they might not even know for sure. I mean, that might not be communicated because there's a whole nother podcast that we'll talk about later about why doctors don't tell you these things, why you don't know that your abnormal pap smear is an STD, why nobody says like, oh yeah, your abnormal pap smear, it's fairly normal because so many people get abnormal pap smears because so many people get HPV. Nobody's telling you that. So yeah, so you probably have an STD or you have had an STD or someone you know has had an STD and it's okay. It's pretty chill. It's not a big deal. Thanks so much for joining us today for our podcast. If you are interested in the unedited version, come and check us out on YouTube. YouTube's the whole like 100% start to finish conversation. Bloopers, not making sense talking over my own self, drinking a cocktail version, speaking of which. If you'd like to follow our podcast, we're going to have a podcast every week again. We used to, you can see some of our old podcasts online as well. iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Google Podcasts, I think it's called, Android. You can subscribe anywhere you like. Please review, come subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell us what you think. And if you'd like to be a part of our podcast or if you have some input and feedback of a question you would like answered in the upcoming uh, shows, then please let us know and reach out to us that way. We are the stdproject.com. Thanks so much for joining us.